Okay, I take it back. This is the most comfortable pad I've ever slept on. Your sleeping pad is probably one of the most important pieces of gear that you will buy. Think about it. It's responsible for how good a sleep you're going to get in the backcountry, but also has the very important job of insulating you from the cold ground and, in some situations, keeping you alive. So, if out of all your backpacking gear, your sleeping pad's one of the most important pieces of gear you're gonna buy, Please choose wisely. And today I'm going to help you choose because I've spent months testing, comparing, and rating nine different sleeping pads based on price, comfort, warmth, and weight to figure out which of these sleeping pads is the best for you. So let's check it out. Okay, for the purpose of this test, we're going to assume that you are at least a three season camper, taking your pad at least occasionally into colder temps in the spring and the fall. If you are only a summer camper, unless you're going to be sleeping at very high elevation, just about any of these pads will work for warmth. Some of these pads are only good for summer temps and some will take you into some of the coldest weather you can expect. But warmth isn't everything, so we're also going to be talking about price, comfort, and weight. I've taken every pad on this list and I've rated them on a five-point scale across four different criteria. And so going from lowest to highest score, we're starting with the Climate Insulated Static V. Climate pads are some of the most affordable pads available today, with this one of their warmest pads coming in at just $100. And they have decent thickness and comfort for their patented V design with deep valleys to help relieve pressure points. It's not the most comfortable pad, but it's not bad at all. The biggest problem with the climate pads, and especially this one, is this area right here. You see, this is an insulated pad with insulation running all through these baffles. All that insulation adds weight to this pad. In fact, this is the second heaviest pad on this list at one pound, eight ounces, which isn't the worst, but the problem is this area has no insulation and it allows cold from the ground to seep through the pad. Just look at the thermal image of this pad. It was only awarded an ASTM certified R value of 1.9, which is not very good, meaning you really shouldn't take it any time other than summer, which makes you wonder why carry all that extra insulation. Number eight is the Sea to Summit Etherlite Extreme. The first thing you notice about this pad is how bulky it is when you got it rolled up. But even if you get past that, this is an expensive pad at $230, which I'll note a lot of these pads are over $200, but still $230 is the second most expensive pad on this list. And it's also the heaviest at two pounds, 1.6 ounces, which is almost double most of these other pads. But where this pad makes up for its shortcomings is in its warmth. It's got an R value of 6.2, which makes it the second warmest and it's super comfortable pad with this quilted pattern on top that relieves pressure points. Just a little bit better than the Etherlite Extreme is the regular Etherlite. It's basically the same design with the same level of comfort, but it's only half as warm. You would hope that would mean that I would save you twice as much money, but in reality, you only save about $20. And I guess you're paying for the weight savings because the regular is not quite a pound lighter at one pound, 6.2 ounces. And so that makes this pad come in seventh on my list. Number six is the warmest pad on this list with the new Thermarest X-Therm NXT. This thing has the best warmth to weight ratio with a whopping R value of 7.3 for just one pound and four ounces, which is really pretty incredible. This pad will get you into the coldest temps, making it a true year round pad. My biggest complaints are the price. This is the most expensive pad at $260, $30 more than the second most expensive pad, and it's not the most comfortable. It certainly isn't bad, but these small, shallow, horizontal baffles offer very little give, making it basically just a stiff board that you lay on. But it's a give and take because the design of these baffles is what helps give this the warmth for such an incredible low weight. Number five on my list is the regular Climate Static V. Now, this is a summer only pad with the same problem as the insulated version, but it's just so cheap at just $65 for a relatively comfortable pad that doesn't weigh very much, just one pound and two ounces. If you only hike in summer and you're on a budget, this is really a decent pad for the money. 
Now, all the pads I'm talking about today, you can get from Moose Jaw, who is today's sponsor. Moose Jaw has one of the largest selections of camping and backpacking gear anywhere on the internet. Their quirky dad joke vibe just kind of makes me giggle, which is really refreshing from a retailer. And they care about the people who watch this channel, offering 10% off when you use the code MLOMJ. That stands for My Life Outdoors and Moose Jaw. Use it to get 10% off most things Moose Jaw sells, 5% off things that are already on sale. Some exclusions do apply. Okay, now we're getting into the truly good pads with this pad, the Nemo Insulated Tensor, my pad of choice all through 2022. It's relatively light at one pound and three ounces. It's got good comfort with a moderately quilted baffle construction that I have found to be adequately comfortable. It's not the cheapest at $220, but it's not the most expensive and it's got really good warmth with an ASTM R value of 4.2, which is good for all but the coldest temps. I did knock off half a point just because in testing I did find some weak spots in the insulation but in use I found it to be adequately warm for most of the hikes that I do. Number three is the new Thermarest X-Lite NXT. The X-Lite has been the best-selling pad on the market for years and I think my testing has revealed why. This is the lightest pad on my list at just 16 ounces yet has some of the best warmth with a certified R value of 4.5. Now almost all the other pads I tested had some sort of cold spot that that allow the temperature of the ground to seep through more than the rest of the pad. Except for the Thermarest pads, these pads seem to be the most efficient at insulating from the cold. Its price isn't the best, but it's on par with all the other major pads. The biggest downside, which really isn't that big, is these pads just aren't as comfortable as the quilted style pads. But it's also the dimples of the quilting that seem to let the cold through in different spots. So you have to decide which is more important, a slightly more comfortable pad or a slightly warmer pad. Number two on my list actually tied the Thermarest NXT at 15 total points, but for different reasons. The Big Agnes Rapide was a little bit cheaper, just as warm, a whole lot more comfortable, but a lot heavier at one pound and eight ounces compared to just one pound of the NXT. Even so, the other features of the Rapide were able to push it up to the next best pad, which, if I'm being honest, surprised me a little bit as did the best testing pad on my list, the brand new Big Agnes Zoom Ultralight Pad. This was the second lightest pad that I tested at just 17 ounces. Along with the Repeat, it is the most comfortable out of any of the pads I tested with the quilted top three inch thickness across the pad, but 3.5 inch thickness on the outside edge to kind of cradle you into the middle of the pad. The design of the Big Agnes pads are by far the most comfortable that I've ever slept on, but the two areas this pad didn't do so well in was price. This pad is $230, which is right at the top of what you will pay for a good sleeping pad. And the main reason why this pad surprised me is because it doesn't seem to be as warm as the certified ASTM R value of 4.3. And that surprised me for two reasons. One, because this pad did pass the same standardized certification of the Thermarest pads, getting basically the same rating, yet felt colder in the field and revealed cold spots in my admittedly less efficient at home testing. And it surprised me because when I knocked off points for it not feeling as warm, this pad still edged out every other pad, giving it 15.5 total points across my four criteria. Which means even with how expensive this pad is and the fact that it sleeps a little bit cooler, it's still the best pad on my list. Okay, that's about it for sleeping pads. But if you're interested in more videos like this, check out this video right here where I talk about every type of backpacking stove on the market. Please like, subscribe, and do all those other things. And as always, Thanks for watching. I kind of want to see if I can do like a Princess and the Pea type thing. Oh, oh is it going to work? Oh. <laughs>